Yes! Ben wins the fire showdown and earns the final seat at Tribal Council. Oh man, I can't wait to see how Reddit has classified Ben. It's over. Chris has earned his way into the final three in a historic move, taking on Devons. Oh man, I can't wait to see how Reddit has classified Chris. Go Fireman! There it Woo! is! Gabler makes fire the fastest fire that has ever man, been made. Gabler. Oh man, I can't wait to see how Reddit has classified the Ally Gabler. In part one, we covered the first 15 winners. In part two, we covered the second 15 winners. Today, we cover the new era. As Survivor has gotten more and more twisted, is a strategic game the best bet? Do you want to be a social butterfly? Does the jury finally respect physicality? Let's get it on. We'll get started. Yeah. Here we go. Jeremy Collins won Survivor's second chances, although I can't remember why he did it. My second chance is all about Val and the kids. Oh yeah, thanks Jeremy. One of the very few players to secure every single jury vote on a season, and I refute the argument that it had anything to do with Val being pregnant back home. Spence Bot may have learned how to love out there on the island, but Jeremy learned how to navigate what was dubbed voting blocks by the players beautifully. You know, a block that votes together. Also known as an alliance. It's not often someone plays an idol on their ally, that ally gets voted out next round, and basically nothing bad happens to them. 63% of respondents voted Jeremy as a strategic winner, while 32.9% voted him as a social winner, and 4.1% thought one individual immunity win was enough to vote him as a physical winner. Now we have our second iteration of Brain vs Brawn vs Beauty, and with it we have Beauty Michelle Fitzgerald winning the season. Is she like Tony and bucked the stereotype of her tribe? Nope. All but one voted her as a social winner. 98.7% of respondents. I'm not mad at the 1.3% though. That puzzle kick is iconic, and if that's the only reason to vote her as a physical winner, I'm on board. Although being the first winner to never attend a pre-merge tribal council is also a bonus. Imagine being such an iconic winner that you forever change how final tribal council will be played out. As a complete tangent, Brain vs Brawn vs Beauty literally never misses. Combined with the Australian Survivor season Brain vs Brawn, this theme is a winner. Now we move on to Adam Klein, the man with the biggest hidden immunity idol. This is the winner who may not have always succeeded in his crazy plans, but my god does he swing for the fences every time he plays. Jeff was simply too much of a coward to reward his brilliant idol play in Winners at War. You want to play this? Yeah, can I play that? This thing that you can't get off of the voting podium. Yeah, I, yeah, I want to play that. He may have won one individual immunity challenge, but 71.6% of respondents voted him as a strategic winner, with 28.4% voted him as a social winner. With how the whole merge round reward steal fiasco went for Adam, I'm kind of surprised it's not tilted even more to the strategic side, but either way we'll throw him on the list. Now we have Sarah Lucina, the fan favorite game changer. Wait, no, that's not right. Now we have Sarah Lucina, the winner of Survivor Game Changers, who changed up her game significantly from Survivor Kageyan. You see, in her first season, she played like a cop, but this time, she played like a criminal. Last time I played like a cop, look where it got me. This time I'm playing like a criminal, and we'll see where it gets me. Despite competing in three seasons, Sarah has never actually won an individual immunity challenge, which of course led to 6.7% of respondents classifying her as a physical winner. 16% classified her as a social winner, which to be fair, if you were her it girl, you'd do the same. 77.3% of respondents classified her as a strategic winner, and that's where she's going on the list. Next up we have everyone's favourite winner, Ben. Where my Ben defenders at? I'm not one of them. But good for you if you are. Ben used hidden immunity idols from the final seven all the way to the final four, and then won the final four fire making challenge that no one could have prepared for because it came out of absolutely nowhere. This has been a sticking point among fans and caused 74.8% of respondents to vote Ben, someone who has won zero individual challenges across two seasons, as a physical winner. I guess fire making really fast is a physical attribute? But the dude couldn't even pull the same coloured rock as his wife out of a bag with consistency. Come on, man. 
I do think before the final seven, Ben was playing a pretty good game, and if he'd been voted out any time before the final four, he'd probably be remembered as a really fun character. Oh well, what a timeline we live in. Survivor Ghost Island is a season that you're probably not going to like until the second time you watch it, and maybe not even then. Knowing that it's a story of these two titans, Wendell and Dom, battling it out for the win, and it's literally as close as it gets, makes the weird editing slightly better. Wendell vs Dominic really is the ultimate social game versus strategic game in my eye. I don't think it's a coincidence that the first five jurors, who got to watch Dominic be super flash yet tribal council after tribal council, all voted for Dom, and the second five jurors, who got to spend a lot more time getting to know Wendell and Dominic, voted for Wendell. 64.9% of respondents label Wendell as a social winner, which is how I interpreted the story told to us. 28.4% voted him as a strategic winner, and the remaining 6.8% voted him as a physical winner. Survivor David vs Goliath is the best season in this third, and I think the winner has almost nothing to do with it. Mike White fans, stay winning. Ow, bitch. Nick's three individual immunity wins at the end of the season were enough to get him 12.8% of respondents calling him a physical winner, fewer than Ben, who won zero challenges. Some have claimed that Nick Wilson is secretly the son of JT and Fishback, which, fair enough, we don't know what they got up to on night 39 of Token Scenes. But did he gain his father's strategic chops or his father's social charm? 42.5% voted social, but 45.2% voted strategic. And considering the brilliant minority split vote that the Davids pulled off this season, it's not hard to see why. Let's add him to the rankings and move on to the real fan favorite winner. Chris from Edge of Extinction. Imagine sitting on Edge of Extinction for 27 days, meticulously planning how you're going to win when you got back. And then Chris wins instead, so you have to give him your plans. Sorry, War Dog. While Chris did play a brilliant four days of Survivor, running circles around every single one of my favourites, which was tough to watch, he did also only play four brilliant days of Survivor. Chris, without the Edge of Extinction twist, is just some dude who got voted off third. But he did beat Joe, often hyped up to be one of the best challenge competitors of all time in the comeback challenge. 77.6% of respondents classified him as a physical winner, officially bringing the count of physical winners in each third to two. 10.6 classified him as a strategic winner, and 11.8 called him a social winner. Which makes sense to me, but it'd be hard to be disliked if you spent 25 days straight with the jury. Right? It's time for me to teach you about teaching time with Tommy, winner of Island of the Idols. I may not like the season very much, but what I do like is having a winner that did not go to Island of the Idols. I just love it when production's ideas don't pan out. Tommy's game revolved around having others bring the information to him. He himself said that he felt like a kingpin out there. While 1.4% did vote him as a physical winner, the man who won zero individual immunity challenges and did not compete in fire making challenges, 16.7% voted him as a strategic winner. But it was his ability to make others trust him and share information with him that got 81.9% of respondents to classify him as a social winner. In a season absolutely dominated by twists and advantages, being well liked and well insulated was the best way to stay out of the firing line. Hang on a second, I've seen this guy before. Tony Vlarkos, after having a spectacular flameout on Survivor Game Changers, returned to Winners at War with a plan of action. Lay low, be chill, and wait until it was the perfect time to go absolutely buck wild. I think my favourite Survivor conspiracy theory is that Tony threw in Game Changers because he knew that there would be an all winners season eventually and he wanted to lower his threat level. But what's your favourite Survivor conspiracy theory? Tony did win enough immunities for 3.9% of respondents to call him a physical winner, and he had some killer social gameplay, like always sitting down so people were talking down towards him and didn't feel dominated. 85.5% of respondents classified him as a strategic winner, which honestly, just based on the Sophie blindside alone, that's fair enough, that move was chef's kiss. Put him in strategic winners again. We've now officially entered the new era of Survivor. If Tommy needed his social game to avoid catching strays in that season, the new era makes Island of the Idols look like more of a joke than it already is. We've got Shot in the Dark, Extra Vote, Vote Steal, Knowledge is Power, The Weird Advantage, 
and in the Murds, Hourglass Advantage, and Do or Die, on top of Final Four Fire Making and any other twists I couldn't be bothered mentioning. And this is the first season of the new era. They don't really slow down from here. Our winner Erica did get 1.3% Colin a physical winner, and 44.2% Colin a strategic winner, but 54.5% classify her as a social winner. Her ability to be a lion in lamb's clothing allowed her to maneuver through the season basically undetected, but still have enough win equity to pull it off at the end. Our second winner of the new era didn't have an easier time when it came to wild twists in the game. In fact, throw in an advantage amulet and an unaired idol nullifier for good measure, why don't you? Thank you, Jeff. It's a very similar story to last time. Marianne was underestimated and was able to pull off the win because of it. We know for a fact that this was her strategy, because there is a Reddit post by Marianne from before she went on Survivor asking, what are some ways you can seem less intelligent? 38.5% of respondents called her a strategic winner, and with a beautiful final six round like that Omar boot, I find it hard to argue with them. The remaining 61.5% classified her as a social winner, and it seems like social game reigns supreme in the new era of Survivor. This next minute is for you, Gabler. Let's do this next minute for Lester Tanny. Gabler laid out his strategy pretty clearly for us. I might just let him take it away. Ali Gabler kind of came up to the surface, came over there. I didn't trust Ellie. We took her out. Now I plan to go underwater again and just chill and then pop back up so I'm not perceived as, as a threat. But when the time is right, I'm ready to strike. What do you know? It's very similar to how the last two winners won. Hide under the surface so as not to be perceived as a threat, and then pop back up to strike when the time is right. That is classic social winner right there. 9.2% classify him as a physical winner, and this next minute is for them, with 11.8% classifying him as a strategic winner, but again, 78.9% classified him as a social winner. The more survivor changes, the more things stay the same. Oh, would you look at that? Another amazing social player winning survivor in the new era. What do you know? When your first line at Final Tribal Council has the jury laughing, not something juries are particularly known to do, that is a strong social game right there. What do I think it is your perception of me? I think you love me. <laughs> I honestly think they could have ended Final Tribal Council at this moment. That's when we knew Jam Jam was about to sweep the jury. I probably don't rank it as the best Final Tribal Council performance. We have the likes of Chris Doherty and Todd Herzog to compete with. But let me know what you think in the comments. 19.5% voted Jam Jam as a strategic winner, with the remaining 80.5% voted him as a social winner. Lastly, we get to D, the second winner who had an entire scene dedicated to their feet. Woo, let's go! <laughs> Let me know if you can think of who the other one is, or maybe Edzik and I have missed something, and feet content has secretly been winner content the entire game. D had extremely strong social connections, enough to get a 42.3% of the votes classifying her as a social winner, but it was the moves she made with those connections, like telling Julie about the final 7 vote and leading the Jubilee side at final 6, that got a 51.3% of respondents classifying her as a strategic winner. With that, we have classified all 45 winners of Survivor into either strategic, social, or physical. Let's take a look at the stats and see what we can learn about how Survivor has evolved over the years. First, let's talk about these 15 seasons. We've actually had an exact mirror of part 1. Six winners were voted as strategic, seven winners were voted as social, and two winners were voted as physical. That's pretty funny. Survivor desperately trying to shake up the game, and the more they try to do it, the more it stays the same. Of the six winners voted strategic, four of them were men and two of them were women. Of the seven voted social, three men and four women. Of the two voted physical, both men. However, the gender breakdown is a bit weird because we had a stretch of six winners in a row, all of whom were male. On the one hand, with enough random sampling, you're just likely to get streaks of this every now and again. On the other hand, this occurring directly as Final Four fire making was forced is what I would call mildly interesting. I'll leave it to the reader to draw their own conclusions, and please, feel free to share them. Now let's look at the data for all 45 seasons at once. Coming in third place is the physical category, with just 6 out of 45 winners, or 13.3%. One woman, and five men. This makes sense to me. There are very few notable survivors whose entire game has revolved around winning challenges, and even fewer who actually make it far enough to plead their case to the jury. 
But if you do have a strong enough physical game to plead your case to the jury, you've probably played a pretty good strategic or social game to keep you safe when you don't win challenges, like Kim, Boston Rob, or Tony in Winners at War. We've had 19 social winners, 10 women and 9 men, and 20 strategic winners, 13 men and 7 women. 19 versus 20 is basically close enough for me to call it a tie. Our biggest streak of one winner type in a row was 4, which happened 3 times. Bob Crowley to Sandra for social, Cochran to Natalie for strategic, and then Erica to Jam Jam for social again. These three streaks almost feel representative of different eras of Survivor to me. I've never gotten a concrete answer as to how people break up seasons of Survivor into eras, so I'd be interested to see what you think in the comments down below. And while you're down there, you could even subscribe for more useless Survivor analysis. One last fun fact is that redistributing the physical winners into the second place category makes it 23 to 22 with Jenna, Fabio, and Chris moving to the social category, and Tom, Mike, and Ben moving to the strategy category. It is insane how perfectly symmetrical this is. What's better, strategy or social? They're about equally as good, and no one gives a shit about the physical game. That's all for this week, but we'll be back next week to answer another question about Survivor that no one is kid enough to ask. And it looks like I might need to buy some chicken hearts. Thank you very much to every single one of you that has made that the case. Until then, I've been Henry Hickman Survivor, and I'll see you at the next challenge.